Rajat Sharma joins us and Mohit Gaba as well to talk us through uh, this market which is looking tentative at best. Piyush is still with us to talk us through a lot of earnings uh, as well. Gentlemen, um, how is it looking uh, considering we failed to hold on to 7850 as well now? Yeah, hi Anupriya. Uh, to be honest, I mean, I'm probably the wrong person to talk about the levels at which markets are going to bounce back. But uh, if you look at the broad trend in earnings, I think so far what we've seen, uh, early days of course, but so far from what we've seen, earnings are looking uh, really positive. I was listening to HCL. It's too early for me to comment on that. But the other IT stocks which have reported earnings, I was looking at that. I think uh, Infosys revenue guidance is really positive. The net profit was up 16%. TCS posted excellent numbers. Even a mid-cap stock yesterday. KPIT posted very good numbers. So I think the, if this trend continues, uh, obviously it's not the best time to look at the uh, overall valuations of Nifty because we're in the middle of an earnings season and uh, you know after uh, all the earnings are reported over the next two to three weeks, you'll have more clarity on that. But my sense is where we are, some of the sectors in the market are, uh, are due for a very sharp uh, bounce back. So we've added a couple of stocks in the uh, metal space, which has corrected a lot over the last uh, two years or so. Uh, we've added a couple of stocks in uh, NBFC space. We've uh, bought stocks in infrastructure. So selective buying in sectors is uh, definitely on. And then the rest of it, you know, it's hard to second guess what the markets do over the next two months or three months. But I think it's a good time to start buying. Good time to start buying. The next question then, Rajat, uh, has to be to you. And what do you start buying at closer to 7,800? Um, where are the pockets that are looking exciting to you before we throw some of the stocks that are moving today? Yeah, so Anupriya, as I said, uh, we've uh, added a couple of stocks. We sold a couple of stocks. I think last time I was uh, on your budget day show, I recommended buying into public sector banks, which was SBI and IDBI. Uh, we've closed positions in that. We've just disclosed that on our site a few days back. Uh, in the metal space, uh, we were looking at large cap metal stocks. Uh, I, I think the thing is that I was reading about it. Most of these metal stocks have reached uh, bottom of their, uh, uh, you know, uh, capex infusion, and they're due for some really sharp bounce back. Now they have run up 20 to 30 percent, but I have to say. Uh, it surprised me how the data on in that sector has changed, especially from China and other places. So besides the large cap metal stocks, one stock we've added to our portfolio is a really small cap uh, metal company, Rama Steel, which is, uh, you know, it's uh, keep in mind that this company has some debt on its books, but they're expanding uh, in the west, they're expanding in the south, they're uh, increasing their capacity by up to three times. So I think stocks like these are the kind of stocks you buy in these environments and hold on to them for a very long time because these could give you some uh, you know, multi-bagger kind of returns which people talk about. The other stock is from, again, Infra theme. It's Vartec Wabag, which is into uh, water treatment. And uh, what I like most about this stock is uh, they've consistently grown their order book at approximately 15% uh, on a five-year basis. But this year alone, we expect their order book to grow to about 60% just on this year alone. So that's like a fourfold jump in their order book. The revenue for this year has not grown so much. Uh, I guess it's uh, playing on the theme that there is severe uh, water crisis in the country and going forward, this would be a theme which could uh, outperform. So again, for a stock like Vartec, you know, you don't buy it at 570 where it's trading right now, hoping it would be 650 and I sell it or, uh, you know, if it's 450, I sell it. You buy the stock and keep in your core portfolio for a very long time. Point. Rajat, how do you treat metals at this point? Because um, it's sort of been on the touch me not radar. It's given people great trading pops who are brave enough to catch them at this point. Um, how would you look at them? We've got Hindalco off about 7% on the day's high right now. Vedanta reporting numbers as well uh, off the day's high significantly at this stage. Yeah, so two things there, Anupriya. First is how do you look at the uh, steel sector overall? And then secondly, the specific stocks within that sector. My sense is uh, stocks that have higher exposure to uh, UK and Europe could probably uh, face some pressure going forward because of slowdown in that region. But again, I was listening about 15% decline in prices in China. I think everything that could be negative for this sector has already played out. And every time there is a negative news, everybody talks about it as if this is the end. 
these are the kind of environments where you would buy into stocks like these. You know, you had a Jindal Steel which was trading at 350 or 400 odd levels around uh, three, four years back. It's today at, I think, around 70 or, uh, sorry, 13, uh, uh, sorry, I'm talking about, uh, uh, what's this? Sorry, JSW. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Jindal Steel, I think. Jindal Steel, which was trading about. So uh, uh, I think it's got the wrong chart on the screen. I'm talking about Jindal Steel, which was you know, trading about 350. But my point is, these, uh, these stocks would do well over the next three, four years. And when they do well, they would not do well by 10% or 15%. It's not like industrial metals will stop getting consumed. China, of course, you know, it consumes 50% of industrial metals worldwide. So at some point, point, demand has to revive, so if it's sort of blown out of proportion, is where you buy some of these stocks and hold on to your portfolio for a very long time. All right. Um, interesting thought, candid uh, comments there. Sorry, Rajat, uh, what do you make of uh, uh, the banking pack and uh, Yes Bank in particular? And then uh, by that time, if you could get me Yes Bank an idea on the charts as well, uh, Mohit. Yeah, so Anupriya, I mean, uh, not just Yes Bank, I think so far the uh, uh, numbers from the banking side that we've seen, they're all uh, actually looking quite positive. Yes Bank, Indusind Bank. I was actually a little disappointed with the way access numbers came out. But uh, other than that, most uh, banks that have reported numbers have uh, actually done well. So going forward, I do think, uh, I don't think I'm going to get back into public sector banks. I bought a couple of banks on the budget day show as trading bets, SBI and IDBI. I've sold them off this week. I'm actually planning to get back into some of these private sector banks. And within that, actually, Axis, despite the fact that the numbers were not uh, up to expectation, is one stock which I prefer amongst all the other private sector banks purely because, you know, the way they've come out and boldly declared their NPAs in the previous quarters, it seems like they've set the trend for other private sector banks like ICICI. And uh, let's see how ICICI numbers come out today. But uh, access is definitely a, a stock you could add on to your portfolio. Other than that, you know, I've got HDFC, I've got access, I've got a little bit of all of these stocks. SDFC in particular, I mean, if you pick up the fact sheet of any mutual fund house today, you will see top allocation to HDFC. So I think for many years with the number of new SIPs being registered, the fund flow in mutual funds, HDFC will keep getting its share of buying. So uh, HDFC and access clearly, you know, you could buy and hold on in your portfolio. All right, let's talk. Um, Rajat, um, given how the index is moving, I just want to get a sense of what are you, which, which earnings are we watching out for at this point? I think there's some earnings that are out. Uh, as I just heard, but Rajat, if you could just take us through what you are, um, what is, what are the key things that you're looking, watching out for at this point? Yeah, so Anupriya, as I said, I'm looking for a lot of the other banking stocks to report earnings and uh, uh, all the constituents of the nifty companies to report earnings because that's, that's what will give us uh, a broad idea in terms of how the markets are valued right now. It's too early right now to say, but all the stocks that uh, constitute the Nifty, it'd be interesting to see broadly if the earnings will be pro positive or not. So far, what we've seen, we've actually seen uh, earnings much better than how they've been for the last six, seven quarters. But again, uh, they're not really giving us any direction in terms of whether uh, uh, banking stocks will do well overall because we've got two banking stocks which have reported good earnings. We've got Access which did not do so well. Uh, auto stocks, Maruti, which is the only stocks that that's reported earnings was uh, very bad set of numbers, but I expect Tata Motors to report very good uh, numbers uh, this quarter. So uh, uh, all the stocks across uh, IT, banking and automobiles would be interesting to watch out for. All right. Uh, Rajat and Mohit, thank you so much for joining us.